Are you making this mistake which is limiting your grade and is something that lots and lots of other students are doing as well? A-levels can be quite challenging at times. There is a huge amount of content that you've got to learn for all of your subjects. And also some of that uh, content can be quite difficult. And if you look at some previous exam paper questions, they go into lots and lots of depth and you've really got to know your stuff to answer them well. Now, a couple of the mistakes that students make is that they can actually revise quite passively. So this just means uh, maybe re reading through your notes, maybe just highlighting things. That's very much a passive way of just kind of trying to absorb information. And a much better way to do things is actually have a go at questions where you're actually having to actively recall that information. But also, students leave a lot of their work until the last minute. Then they cram, they work super hard, really long days, working really intensely just before the exams and often they run out of time to really have a deep understanding of the whole subject. And so what I want you to do is not leave all of your revision till the last minute, but think about how you can work at a manageable workload through the rest of your course. So you're not leaving these 10 hour days until the last minute. Instead, you're bringing that time forward, but working so you don't burn yourself out. Now, that's where I've come up with these physics questions in some of my daily workout books. I've got one here, um, and there's a really good reason why I put this together. But of course, I'm just sat here in the studio. It's not the most interesting place to talk about things. So let's use this with some real world examples as we go outside. So I'm uh, just out for a short run in the woods, not particularly fast, not particularly far. But the important thing is, is that I'm out and actually doing some training. And this is kind of getting me prepared for a race I'm doing in about a month's time. Now it's exactly the same when it comes to preparing, uh, learning new material and revising for any exams, is that you don't always have to be doing the hardest questions. You don't have to be working for eight hours at a time. Often doing something is better than nothing. And the something that you can be doing doesn't have to be super hard. And this is what happens with uh, maybe real athletes and professional sports people. They don't always go out to run a personal best every time they go training, and they don't always try and lift the heaviest things in the gym. Instead, a lot of training happens in what they call zone two, which is where you've got a relatively low heart rate, and you can just keep at this pace for a long time. And equally, a lot of the time in the gym, it's doing maybe a high number of repetitions of a relatively light weight, and that's gonna help build your muscles, kind of get you toned, but without that risk of injury. And that's what you have to think about when it comes to revising in the kind of the longer term for all of your exams. There's no point doing the hardest questions for eight hours straight because you'll just burn out and you can't keep up that, that amount of workload over the longer term. Instead, it's better to be doing relatively simple questions on a regular basis for a short amount of time. And that's what I've got in these books here. So these are my daily workout books for A-level physics. If I just show you what we've got here. So uh, this book basically has questions for every single day of the course. And a lot of the questions are relatively straightforward, like define Ohm's law, maybe just calculate some percentage uncertainties, um, just read some information off a graph. So not particularly A-star level questions, but I reckon if you're doing a book like this, you're gonna get really high grades because it just builds your competency across all the different bits of the course. And there are two key things here about this. First of all, it's gonna bring up topics again and again and again, more regularly than when you just learn about it in school. Because in school, you might learn about electricity, and then a month later, you're learning about forces or waves. In this kind of book here, what I've got are questions about electricity every couple of weeks. And there's this kind of spaced repetition of topics that come up again and again and again. The other thing about it, is it kind of really makes you think. It's not just saying, here's physics, read the page, now you understand it. It's what we call retrieval practice. And that means you've got to be active when you're trying to recall the information to answer a question. Can you define Ohm's law? Can you remember the best definition in the fewest words in order to get any marks if this comes up in an exam question? And basically, rather than just reading the definition, because you've actually got to think about what it is, that's gonna really help your kind of deeper knowledge. And what I'm doing at the moment is making more questions for students in year 13, as well as students in year 12. But it doesn't really matter which subject you're doing, and if you're doing A-level, GCSE, or even at university, what you've got to think about is the way that you're training 
for this event that you've got in the future, just like a sportsman would. Um, or if there's a, maybe an athlete, they're going to be training for something at a fixed date in the future. And they've got to come up with their training plan. And you need to be doing the same thing because you know that in the future you've got your real exams and you need to think about your training plan. What are you going to be doing week in, week out to kind of build that muscle memory to get as prepared as you fully can be. So when it comes to the, the final sprint before the race at the end, you're hitting the ground running and not kind of, uh, kind of just wondering what on earth you should have been doing maybe three, six or 12 months beforehand. Anyway, I'm going to get on my, with my run now. I think I'm doing just like a three mile uh, zone two easy day today. I did like a nine mile run yesterday. I did a gym this morning. Uh, so I'm going to get on with my easy kind of gentle run today, which overall is going to sort of hopefully help me develop. And then that means I can kind of achieve my goals that I'm training for. So basically doing a small amount of work every single day can really help you. And that's why I've put together a challenge for November. Now this is ideal for students in year 13 doing A-level physics. And what I'm gonna be doing is sending you one question a day to have a go at. You have a go at that over a couple of minutes. And then the next day I'll send you an email with the answers to that work and also another question for that day. Now this is going to be running for 30 days only. They're going to be questions from my new daily workout book, which is book five, which is ideal for anybody doing A-level physics. Now this is going to be building on some of the work that you'll have probably done in class recently. Things like circular motion, simple harmonic motion, and also an introduction to gravitational fields. Now, if you haven't done that work yet, that's fine. You can still have a go at the question to see what you understand so far, but you can always maybe leave that question till a later date. That whole point though, is to see that you can do a small amount of work every single day, and that's gonna compound over time. So after one day, you might not notice any difference. After a week, you might be feeling a bit more confident. After a month, you're gonna be rock stars. And of course, if you were to do this for every day of your A-level course, by the time you get to your real exams, you're not having to cram and do 10 hours of work a day. Instead, there'll have been this spaced repetition and this active retrieval of information throughout the whole year. So you've got a really good base upon which to work as you're doing your, far, your kind of last minute kind of uh, past papers. Not last minute, as you're doing your past papers over the last couple of months. So if you want to sign up for this 30 day November challenge, you can find the link in the description beneath this video. It's completely free to do. There'll just be an email sent to you every day throughout November. You have a go at that. And there's also going to be some prizes available as well. So there's a hundred pounds of prizes for students just like you that you could win. Uh, and this is gonna hopefully help you understand a bit more physics and also just let you see that by doing a small amount of work every single day, you can achieve great things at the end of the year. So if you wanna sign up for that, click the link in the description below.